Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. I have so much to tell you. I don't even know where to start. First, let me thank very quickly the following individuals for the donations. That would be Indulge in Beauty. Thank you so much. Barbara Young, thank you so much. And Brenda Hall, thank you so much. Elena Coy, thank you so very much. I am truly humbled and, and just blessed and thank you so very much. I also want to uh, thank Gail Ward for sending me the box of supplies. That was so awesome. Just really thank you for the heartfelt letter for all of it. And just so you know, I am working on reorganizing my channel and putting numbers in front of my videos. So thank you for the suggestion. I should have did that a long time ago, so I'm going to get right on that. Anyway, I am working with my artscape again. I love, love, love these paints. I did a little math, which was not easy for me. <laughs> you know, my daughter comes home in seventh grade, and this has been going on since she was in second grade, and I cannot do math with her. Things have changed so much, so... I did some elementary math and um, I have a few of them missing here. Let me just put those back in. Um, these work out to be $3 and I think 33 cents for 3.38 ounces of paint. And these are a good quality, medium body, really creamy. Uh, they mix in very, very nicely with whatever medium you're using. Today, it will be a uh, flow trawl we're going to be using. So $3.33 for 3.38 ounces of paint. This at Michael's for two ounces is $2.69. And in my opinion, these are fine to pour with, but these are, are very, very good quality paints. These are your basic, not that they're bad to use, but your basic craft paints, okay? So, although when you go to buy these, you're going to see they're $79, it's more shocking than it really is because you're buying them all at once, okay? So, I'm going to show you the texture of them if you didn't watch my last video. And they are sold on Amazon. I have them linked in my Amazon Influencer Shop, and I will have a link right when you enter the description of my video. So they're nice and creamy. Really, really like them. So now white and black, no matter what type of paints kits you buy, are not going to last long because we use the most of this, right? But these colors here, I'm going to show you, you do not need a lot at all because they're very pigmented um, to color your pouring medium, whatever it may be. Um... I am holding a very special event next week. I'm calling it the Seven Days of Tammas. That's right, a little play on Christmas there. Each day next week on this channel, people, I am going to be giving away something. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, I'm going to have five of these kits to give away. One Loli Vefe gift card for, for uh, $50 to give away. I believe it's 50. And a $25 gift card to Color Art to give away. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you click your notification bell and make sure you check your notification bell to see that it is on the option of all. Uh, YouTube did an update where they switched everybody's notification bells to personalized, which means you're not getting all the, the notifications for my videos. So make sure, click on that bell and make sure that it's on the word all because here's the, the kink. I'm gonna be doing this live. I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be nighttime. I'm on the East Coast somewhere between six and eight, but please, please, please. I'll try to remember to post in the community tab what time I'm gonna go live. Just make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Also, you need to be subscribed to be eligible to 
win one of my giveaway prizes. So you need to be subscribed. Bad news is, is for the kits themselves, the five kits, that is only open to U.S. residents. The gift card um, for color art is worldwide. And I believe the Lolly Vefe is also, I'm pretty sure it is. If not, I will let you know, but these are only for U.S. residents. Um, they're only sold in the U.S. So I hope you guys come every day to watch my live. We're going to have some fun. Also, I'm doing a Q&A uh, video, not live. I want you to email me your questions you have, artbytammy at yahoo.com. I'm going to compile all of them. And then in a video of me just sitting there answering your questions, I'm going to answer all of them. So email me now, artbytammyyahoo.com, okay? What we're going to do today is we're going to use some of these luscious paints to make another cloud pour. So I'm going to set up and I'll be right back. I want to show you guys this cute little thing that Miss Judy sent me. Judy, thank you so much. I'm going to link this in my Amazon shop. It's a little strainer for your Floetrol bottle because Floetrol needs to be strained. Okay. There's, there's no paint in these cups, just empty cups. And it works beautifully. Floetrol gets like little boogers in it. It's the only thing I could like refer to. <laughs> Sorry, but it, it works really, really well with that. So we need to make a cup of paint. These are two ounce Dixie cups. And you're not going to use much of this paint. That's what I'm showing you right now. That's why I'm doing this on camera so that you can see exactly how I mix my paints. Now, I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just putting about a half a cup full of Floetrol in there. Okay. Cap goes right back on to the jar. I don't know if you saw that, but it did. So, let's see here. I have orange, yellow, Viridian, which is a green, uh, phthalo green, and Payne's gray. I know. You're probably screaming green and orange are going to make mud, which normally they do. But I'm going to attempt not to make mud by separating the colors with white and trying to keep the orange away from the green by using the Payne's gray. So... For this amount of Floetrol right here, I would say maybe almost a teaspoon. I, I mean, it's not really even a teaspoon. And because they're so pigmented, that's going to be plenty of paint. As far as consistency goes... Let's see if it's too thick or too thin. I'll tell you, that's pretty close to being right spot on for consistency. So if you at home are struggling with consistency and you have a paint that is close to this style of paint, this body, mix it up, what I just did on, on the camera, mix it up, and you'll see kind of what the right consistency is. That's that's pretty dang close. I may add like one drop, two drops of water. That was more like four drops of water. Okay. 
Now this is an original acrylic pour recipe. This has nothing to do with house paints that any term like house paint cell activator that's the bloom recipe not this this is original acrylic pouring so that's a very good consistency okay so now i'm going to mix up the other three cameras off other three cameras other three paints off camera and i'll be right back okay so i decided to add two more colors uh phthalo blue and gold i wanted to show you the consistency of the paint so pay attention to the surface not the stick okay so see how I could trace designs on the surface, but then they go away really quickly. That is what you want your consistency to be like, what you want it to do. Okay. See? That is the perfect consistency for a majority of acrylic pours, except for the Dutch pour. The Dutch pour is a little bit thinner, but we'll leave that consistency for a Dutch pour video. So my white is mixed with Floetrol and paint. And in this big cup here, I think this is a 16 ounce cup. I put in two tablespoons of satin enamels. Uh, one of my viewers asked, what's the purpose of this? Well, this is what creates those rock-like, fluffy, cloud-looking shapes in the painting. Um, I've done cloud pours with this stuff in there, and I don't get it. You know, it's a lot of things are at play here with acrylic pouring. So it's not a guarantee every time you do it. Um, well, it can be a guarantee. But, you know, chemistry plays a big part in all of this, too. And sometimes... Brands of paints don't like each other, uh, like other products, and it's just all chemistry in the end, but I think we'll be okay. I put some of that in there. That's almost like, it's not silicone, it's paint, but it, I can equivalate it to adding silicone to your painting to get cells. This helps you get the cloud effect, okay? So I have here an 11 by 14 canvas. That is all ready to go. I have my aluminum push pins in for little feet. I love the aluminum push pins. Uh, they are a little more money, but they don't break like the plastic ones. And I just, I asked, they're a lot stronger. And although the plastic ones you get at the dollar store for a buck, I go through them like crazy. These I've had for months and months and I paid 13 bucks for a box of them and they're still going strong. So cloud pour, I'm going to first, you got to layer the paints in your cup. So I'm going to first put in some white. Remember, the, the object of a cloud pour is to get white fluffy cells. Oh, big lump in my paint. Let me see if I can fish that out. That was because I used the bottom of the satin enamels uh, paint. I was scraping the bottom of the, the container of it and there's some lumps. So the object of the cloud pour is to get big, fluffy, cloud-like patterns in your painting. Now, do they necessarily have to be white? No, but cloud, you kind of want them to be white. I happen to like when they're orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some orange next. A little more white, another lump. I'll have to pick it out when it comes out. I'm hoping it doesn't mess up my pattern now. Okay. Um, next, we're going to go with some phthalo blue. Do a little more white. Now you don't have to do white in between each layer. 
Uh, people layer them differently. It's just how I'm going to be doing it today. Here's some um, green Viridian. Then I'm going to put the phthalo green right next to that without white. Then I'm going to do a little more white. A little bit of gold. And then some Payne's gray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that process until the cup is full. It's almost full, but I'm gonna do smaller amounts and it's gonna take me a couple seconds. So I'm just gonna pause you guys, but just know I'm just doing the same thing over again, just with less amount of paint. I ended up adding only blue, white, and orange on top of that gold, or on top of the Payne's gray, as you can see. It's just I don't want to take up a lot of time with filming stuff like that. Just repetitive stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a puddle of white down. Normally, I don't do that, but for funsies, why not? I'm just going to put a puddle right in the center there. And then I'm going to start pouring this directly out of the cup into the center of the white. I'm going to slowly move to the right, my right. Like so. I'm going to come up and around. Work my way back onto this white. Now, I'm not sure if this cloud effect is going to work with my paints being mixed in Floetrol. Normally, I do it with pouring medium, but I wanted to test it and see see what kind of reaction we get. Another big lump. I guess I shouldn't scrape the bottom of containers. Lesson learned. This is a fun pattern. Very, very fun. Okay. Look at that. It's fun. I don't know if you can see. Let me try to zoom you in. Or I could lift it up even. Maybe I can lift it up. This here, that's like the reaction of the enamel. So once you start stretching it, you should get some pretty cool effects. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to torch it. Because there are a lot of air bubbles. When you mix your paints, you should always try to let them sit overnight. if at all possible. 
this way when the air bubbles pop, you don't get that white speckling, especially when you're pouring on top of white. All right, so here we go. I'm going to stretch um, this way first, nice and slow. I'm hoping that's enough paint. Now that I'm looking, it may not be. And I'm doing this in real time because you just, you need to see what it takes. Time lapse is helping nobody when you're learning like this. Fast and then come back. <laughs> That's called a super tilt. And I really don't think there's enough paint here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cup again. Actually, I'm going to get a clean cup because I don't want to ruin the pattern with drips or anything like that. And I'm going to... Fill her up again. Not all the way, just halfway this time. Let's do more blue. So I'm looking, I have a lot of orange, so let's do more blues and greens on this side. Almost has like a Florida Gators feel going to it. That orange and blue. I believe they're orange and blue. Maybe I'm wrong. Put a little gold in. See, now this time I didn't separate each layer with the white. I'm just kind of all over the place with how I layer these paints. I don't like to stick to one thing. And... Try a little more Payne's Gray. And we shall pour right here. Start this way. Now, technically, you probably should be staying in one place. But uh, since this is an add-on pour, I'm doing things a little differently. I was just worried about... The amount of paint I had there. There's that big lump. I'm kind of just stopping and doing little mini puddles here. Um, this area right here I don't like, so I'm going to pour right on top of it. Okay, and I'll come over here. Off the edge. And we'll do one right here. Why not? Right? Why not? She says.
If you don't like a design, you can just go right over it. That lump is going off. We'll stop right here. You don't have to do the same old, same old that you see everybody doing. Be creative. Okay? Be creative. Make something that looks different. You don't have to follow the same pattern. The recipes and stuff are important, yes, but patterns, not so much. Okay, so now we're going to continue tilting. Go off that way. We're going to come back this way. This area is really pretty. So I don't want to lose much of that. And I lost it. <laughs> I'd love to lose this orange without losing that corner. Okay. All right. So there you have it. We have orange in a green painting that has not muddied. How awesome is that? <laughs> you can see these nice designs. Um, I wish I had a cloud pour to show you right now. So technically, it doesn't look like your typical cloud pour over here. If I stretched it out a little bit more, you could probably get one. But um, I love this, and I don't want to touch it. I want to leave it just as is. So I'm going to give you guys a close-up. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe. We're going to have a lot of fun beginning next Monday, um, hmm, March March, <laughs> maybe four thirteenth or fourteenth. I'll put the I'll put it in the description the exact date. The beginning of Tamis. That's right. I'm gonna be Santa. Well, yeah, I'm gonna play Santa next week and give you guys some goodies. So please make sure you do that and. Uh, Email me your questions. Now is your time, okay? Whatever questions you have, whether it be about a YouTube channel to uh, mixing questions, um, I can't tell you how to, how much paint you need on top of a can. Like, I'm getting questions like, let's see, how do I explain this? I'm getting questions how much paint do I need to leave on the canvas when I'm tilting? I mean, I can't give you an exact answer to that because it's, you tilt it until the canvas is covered and there's not a ton of paint on there. I mean, but there's not an exact number. So questions like that are going to be hard for me to answer, but your typical, uh, why is my painting cracked? Uh, what is an original acrylic pour versus a bloom recipe? Questions like that. I... Just want to help you guys out. Email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. I am working on new lighting as we speak, so hopefully that will help. But here you go. Look at those cool designs, huh? I really, really like that. It's something different. I have a Facebook group. I'm also running a challenge in that group. Uh, for anybody that's, that's interested to win a uh, 
gift card for color art. Um, you can head over to United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. There is a link in the description. Join the Facebook group and take part of that challenge. We're going to have fun with that. And um, all my social media links, the link for the little flow trawl cap will be in my Amazon shop along with these paints that are absolutely stunning. I mean, they I've used them twice. Well, three times, once off camera, and they have not failed me. So I really hope you give them a shot. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. I hope you're all having an amazing day. And happy pouring.